Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. How you doing? Good. How are y'all? Good. Good to see you. So I, I didn't realize until a minute ago that you were in Arkansas. So that, that explains why it's so pretty out there where you're at. Oh, yeah. We're out on the lake today. So if you can, you can kind of see up in the cove here. Yeah. What lake is it? Uh, lake Hamilton. Okay, cool. Um, so- we're, actually, we're actually about two miles off the main lake, which is a crazy, crazy lake. So we're way up here in the creek. You guys ever go um, whitewater rafting? We don't have a lot of that around here. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. I was we've, thinking, I, we've got I, the I, Caddo. I the yeah, we got the Caddo and the White, and there's a little bit on the Washita, but there's not a lot. Cool. Well, Jason said that it doesn't look like you're in your kayak right now. It looks like you're in a, a just a motorboat, fishing boat, right? We're in the G3. Okay. So what's the difference? Because I I'd never really, I don't really know what the difference is. So I, other than being in a kayak, what's the difference in being a kayak angler and you know just, just run of the mill angler? Well, so like this boat, I I prefer aluminum boat. I'm a shallow water angler, even when if I'm in a kayak or if I'm in a bass boat. So. I like to be where I can go explore and try to get away from everybody else. Kind of a little bit more like a John Cox that fishes professional. Uh, my thing is to get off the beaten path. So. Okay. I, I think that's uh I think you're absolutely right there. I, I typically like to fish in that three to eight foot column. If I can, it's a mental thing, but I like to hit the bank if I can too. So, Talk to us a little bit about the water difference, maybe out where you're at versus some other states or, or just to kind of clarify, you know, maybe uh water temperature kind of, you know, technique that you like there in, in the area that you're in. So like here right now, and I can look at my graph, the water temps 86 degrees. Wow. We are almost 105, 106 heat index today. Man. So yeah. You know, a lot of people, they think, well, it's so hot that those fish, you know, uh, that they are, that they're out deeper. And that's a big misconcept. I mean, so when me and Jason met, um, I was the, uh, just a tackle nut and I throw a lot of shell of brim baits. And actually, the two rods I brought with me today, uh, that's all that they have on them is they're a, they're a prop style bait just to Im- intimidate and act like a brim. And we catch a lot of fish doing that. Uh, most people don't realize that, like up here where I'm at right now, it's a creek. So the main lake out there, it's probably... I'm going to say water temp's probably about 88, 89. And it doesn't have the flow and it doesn't have fresh water all the time. So, I mean, the fish kind of, they kind of relate to the shallow water a little bit more. So, and these fish don't get pressured. I mean, you can come up here, get up in the shade up under these trees and they'll just be laying about six inches under the surface. I remember when you uh, hooked me up with that, um, the balsa bait that was in that. Yeah, bait bait call. yeah, it just stayed right there and it threw a huge wake. Why, why do you think the, uh, why do you think the brim is a uh, forage that they like to attack there in Arkansas? So, so to be honest, and I've discussed this with several people, we don't believe it's the brim. We actually believe, and if you remember that bait color is kind of a crawdadish color. So we actually believe, 
and this sounds crazy that they think that bait is a crawfish trying to get away from the brim that are making beds. Oh, wow. Interesting. So, you know, I catch a lot of on my prop bait, I catch a lot of brim on it. And they're usually the copper, what they call the copper heads or the copper nose brim. It's the government. I call them government improved brim. They're a real dark color. And if you take those home and fl fillet them, they're full of crawfish. Hmm. And if you put bass in your live well this time of year that you catch up shella, they're full of crawfish. So they'll spit them up in your live well. And we've just kind of really started putting two to two together and going, this is, this is, they're feeding on crawfish. They're not feeding on brim. You don't hardly ever catch a bass that has a brim in its stomach or in its mouth. Most of the time they're spitting out crawfish. Now, can you eat, can you eat those digested crawfish? <laughs> I wouldn't eat them. <laughs> I don't know if it was like a duck. They're only, like a, they're like a only about. Food. They're only about that long. I was going to say the the chunks and the digestions already happen on that, but a uh, great great thought there. Hey, uh, <laughs> help me out a little bit geographically. The Forestwood Cup that I met you at, what city was that in? That was in Hot Springs. Okay, how far are we from Hot Springs to where you're fishing right now? So right now, from where the convention center was, I am about roughly. Man, I'm going to say I'm about maybe 10 minutes oh okay. Uh, we're, okay. we're not that far at all and then Ochital, or i'm probably butchering that pronunciation how far is that from where you're at currently so lake washital from here is roughly it's about 15 minutes to the closest ramp okay now if i remember jimmy um it's been some years man but uh wasn't uh slick will uh bill clinton on the side of that Building, yes, sir. From? yes sir. You can go, yeah. This is the home of Bill Clinton, so <laughs> yeah, there I'm you go. Slick Willie. <laughs> can't beat that, man. Um, how's, how's life been treating you since we last saw you? Life is good. Um, you know, I've went through a divorce and uh, went to work at a tackle shop, so that part's been really good. Um, uh, it's kind of helped me get by with the divorce uh, but everything's been good from that aspect um you know breaking in a new boat so that's a different uh i'm gonna pull back over here in the shade for a second I understand we uh we're learning i mean this is a whole different ball game for me uh being in somebody else's shop running somebody else's shop. Of course, you remember, Jason, at the Cup, so at the Cup, I had my own place. Um, we were mobile. We were a different breed of shops. And then uh, things kind of, for five years, we were top of the line Japanese uh, U.S. custom shop. And then things changed. And we decided that we either had to buy a building uh, or we had to do something else. And so we decided to do something else and we closed down shop. Uh, I actually took this job at Get Outdoors, where I'm at now, in August of last year. Um, buddy of mine, the owner of the company, he said, Jimmy, I'm looking for somebody to take over and run the shop. And, you know, the first words out of my mouth was, what does it pay? And he said, well, it depends on experience. Well, I've got just roughly, uh, I would say almost 35 years in the fishing industry. And I'm 47, so I've been doing it all my life. Um, so we decided, you know, to, to make a go of it. And it was really good. Um it was a good place to be going through divorce. And for me, it makes everything a little bit easier because I'm around the guys and uh, it's not as much pressure. Now, I ain't going to say it ain't hard sometimes, but it's definitely a lot easier. 
I can speak from experience, you know, like you want to keep yourself occupied for sure. You know, like yeah. you don't want yeah. yourself to wonder because as soon as you start, you know, self-isolating and it's over. <laughs> well, and, and I tell people, you know, I was so used to working outside because I did handyman work for 20 years uh, that I wasn't used to being inside a shop and I wasn't used to being, you know, I stare at fish bait 24 hours a day now, it seems like. So people ask me, they're like, well, what's new? And Jason, you can speak for this. Uh, I don't think our industry is really changing. Yes, the forward facing is affecting everything, but I don't really see fishing changing. Uh, Bait sales wise, it's changed. We don't sell the top waters like we did before. We don't sell the crankbaits like we did before. That's all that's all fixing to slowly flip. I mean, I've talked to several of the pros and had some of the young pros in the shop last week and got to speak with them. And uh, it's pretty amazing when you talk to the guys and the guys are like, wow, it's really changing. It's really It's going back to old ways. We're starting to catch them cranking more. We're starting to catch them doing this more. And then you start hearing the guys talk about, oh, the topwater bite's coming back. And, you know, that's a a big deal. We didn't realize how much of an effect that this was going to have with us. And now we're starting to see things coming back. Uh, We're starting to see it in more of the major tournaments now. You know, the jig bite's back. The you're seeing guys do other things other than shake a minnow all the time. And that's, that's playing a big factor in the fishing industry right now. Yeah. I think what I appreciated about you is, is you showed me some Southern hospitality. You were nice to talk to. And then, uh, I always remember when Shin Fukai came up to your booth and, uh, it was awesome because you had the connection of baits that nobody else had. Like I remember you know, like it was yesterday, you just had stuff that you're not finding anywhere else or that I've ever seen. You just had, 10, 20, 30 baits that I could have walked out of your shop with and been like, holy cow, this is crazy. You know, I can't find those anywhere else. Speak on that a little bit. How exciting was that to hunt and have stuff that nobody else had? You know, it's it's kind of nice when, and not so much just about the baits, but, you know, it's it's really nice when you can reach out to guys like Shen and guys like Matt and uh, Matt Airy and Jacob Wheeler and Anthony Gagliardi and like, I can honestly say, you know, I've been around a lot of talent. Uh, Scott Suggs is a friend of mine. Mark Davis is a friend of mine. Those guys help set me where we could do stuff different. And my ability and to spend time with Jacob Wheeler and Matt Airy was what really set up the whole shin deal. Um uh, Shen was big into wood crankbaits, and that's not something in Japan that you see a lot of. So for what he bought from us, he probably cared over there and made even more money off of uh, because it's a rarity. And that's one of the things that I hold myself different to than most of the other guys in the tackle industry is I don't want to bring just the basic baits i mean everything i want to do i want to do it and i want to make it unique and i want to make it different and i always say if i had the opportunity to open a tackle shop that it would be more like the skateboard shops and probably jason even more like the pickleball shops that you're seeing where it would be set up and it would be really pushing that type of environment like have like apparel and stuff like that? Well, just the, the whole vibe. I mean, so a lot of your tackle shops, you know, you walk into them and they're not really nothing special. They're just another tackle shop. And I have dealings with the guys out west and I see the shops out there like the hookup and I see the shops uh like Waypoint up in Minnesota. And there are those unique places that you go into and you're like, wow. I mean, like we went to Baitworks in Missouri um, a couple of Saturdays ago. And 
I was blown away. I mean, and I've grown up in the tackle industry. So when I tell you their shop was unique and amazing, it was just unbelievable. And I come back with the, with the whole thought process is that's what a tackle shop supposed to look like. And yes, go ahead. that, that is the, you know, that's the thinking that we've lost. I mean, cause these two tackle shops was hunting outdoors, that stuff. Uh, we didn't have the tackle stores that were the true, I would say just a true pro shop. And that's what I think our fishing industry from the tackle standpoint is waiting for. We're waiting for true pro shops to pop up. And that's what I tell my guys when they come in the shop at Get Outdoors is we're a different shop. I'm not that tackle store manager that doesn't want to see his guys catch fish. Uh, our tackle shop, for instance, this is this is bragging on the the anglers that come in my shop, but it's also bragging on our shop. So the shop, we have the Mr. Bass of Arkansas champ. He's the AOY leader. Uh, he won it. He's won several tournaments. We have the high school and the junior level of the high school champions that shop at our shop. We have the BFL regional uh, leader for AOY. He's a customer that comes in our shop. Actually, he calls me and I deliver. He's one of our guides on Lake Washington. So I take care of him personally. Uh, so that's the difference. I mean, I have a relationship with my anglers. Uh, so that's kind of what we base it on. We want to base it where if they call me and they're going to a new body of water, they can ask. They can say, Jimmy, what's going on? Have you heard anything? And if I haven't, I reach out to people like, my old tournament partner and uh, the owner of Virtus Rods, or used to be the owner of Virtus Rods, um, he fished a tournament on Dardanelle like the week before the BFL. And I was able to let those guys have a little bit of knowledge of what he was doing and how he was doing it. And and that, that helps out. I mean, because once you get a relationship with an angler, they're going to come back. They want to be there. They want to be part of it. That's the part that you know, sets us apart, sets me apart. That's what's going to, in the future, set all the tackle shops apart. You know, I don't think I've ever asked this before because we've had several anglers on here, but is there are there any uh, professional anglers that prefer live bait over, um, you know, over, over non-live bait? <laughs> I'm sure we all would prefer it if we could use it during the tournaments and stuff, but that's just something that they don't allow, so none of the guys really get to use it. Oh, they don't allow it. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't know that. Okay. He, uh, Nick does a lot of the production, Jimmy. Uh, he would appreciate this. What I, what I see in a shop that you're saying, man, is, um, if I'm just throwing out random words, cause we're on a mosaic, you know what I mean? Uh, mosaic minds is the name of our podcast. To me, it's a little bit of graffiti. It's a little bit of lights. It's a little bit of a lure that has some holographic, uh, qualities. It's, um, having this special lure that nobody else has behind a glass case and you have to open it up with a key to see it. I think what I'm hearing and seeing from you is, is, is this retail space is stagnant. It's, it's the yeah. same dusty lures that have been there the last three or four years. And maybe you move it around a little bit, but I think you agree with me uh, somewhat is I think if you make it new age and appealing, because I'm going to tell you right now, I've been to shows before and I saw $15,000 worth of lures sold in 15 minutes, the hundred dollar glide baits. And right. from what I understand, I got to be honest with you, I'm not down in the glide bait at all. I don't personally have any, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's all the production value, the uniqueness, the, well, uh, the, the you know, those baits, those, those baits don't catch, uh, like everybody thinks they do. Those baits have what we call in the fishing industry. And what I've learned over the past 10 years is it's a draw power. And it's not only a draw power for the fish, and it will show you the biggest fish in the lake. There's no doubt about it. If it's around, it's going to come look at it. But what that shows in the tackle shop, that's the bait everybody goes, oh, my gosh, what do you catch on these? And that's the big deal. I mean, that's the thing that we all, we don't realize 
we're not aware of, we forget about it, is what sets our tackle shops apart. And, you know, I'm the shop I work in is stuck right in between Trader Bills uh, in Little Rock and Hot Springs. And Jason, you've dealt with Trader Bills. Your baits have been in there before. Uh, it's hard to just do the same thing. And that's what I try to convince people. And that's what makes us a little bit different is not only do I sell tackle, but I'm still an angler. Uh, my heart is still an angler. And I know what I like to see in a tackle shop. The reels behind the glass is, is everything. The And y'all don't laugh at me when I say this, but I'm that guy that can't buy from Tackle Warehouse because I can't touch it. I want to touch it. I want to look at it. I want to feel it. I want to see how big it is. I want to see what draws me to it. And I can't do that on Tackle Warehouse. I'm the, I'm the tackle angler that would rather drive four hours to go buy some fish bait than pick up the phone and order it online. I think uh, when you look at stuff uh, that's going on right now, have you seen the really funny video that the guy's in the uh, Bass Pro and he's taking the lures that he's going to buy and holds it up to the tank and seeing what bass will come up and approach it? Yes. Kind of a comedy, but that's, that's, I think I agree with you. You know what I mean? There's, there's all kinds of shops. There's all kinds of stuff. I think buying, buying stuff that you can't get other places is key. I think knowing people in the industry is key. And quite frankly, I don't claim to be a good angler, but I claim to know a few people in the industry. And I think that's always good to come across and uh, meet people and, uh, you know, and uh, I'll compliment you on your job, man. And it's gotta be, it's gotta be interesting to make a career out of something that you enjoy. So I know it's work, but at the end of the day, I know it's enjoyable. I mean, I, I, I can't say, I can't say I wouldn't like to, to look at baits and, you know, talk to people and, and talk fishing. Well, you know, John Eldridge, I don't know if y'all know the author, John Eldridge, he wrote a book. It's called wild at heart. And I'm no big Bible thumper, but this book really sets a true meaning to what it's like to be kind of a stoic man. Um, you know, it talks about having a passion that you chase and all my life, my only passion, and this goes back to when Rick Clun won the classic in Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I met Bill Norman that day and one of the greatest bait designers ever in fishing history. And here I was a, just a little boy and me and Greg Hackney talk about this, that both of our passions for this sport comes from there. And Greg was there. I was there. I spent my day with Bill Norman. And I tell people, I'm like, that was the passion that he set for me. And then to go from that passion to where I'm at now, it's just a, it's just a more and more of development. And as I, you know, as I look at the future and people ask me all the time, where do I want to be in 10 years? And, you know, I love the shop I'm in. Uh, I get to meet a lot of great guys. I've made a lot more relationships in the state of Arkansas and outside the state with the opens coming here. Uh, Jason, you know, me and you have ties with Jimmy Reese and those guys and, uh, I still talk to Jimmy constantly. We still message. Uh, we talked at the classic. I hung out with him at the classic some. It's really, and, and I look for the future is I want to have that kind of that graffiti shop. I want to have that shop where it's like a kiosk and the guys come in there and they want to see what's the newest, greatest bait out there, or they want to see what's everybody talking about. And I think the only way to do that in the future and even right now is you've got to develop the brand. You've got to develop the relationships. Uh, the relationships have always got to be there, but people got to understand that, ooh, Jimmy's shop just ain't going to be the same. We're going to be different, you know, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, 
Jason, you probably remember when we was at the cup, I was the flat bill wearing, uh, stuck out of the crowd angler. Yep. And, uh, I'm still that guy. I still, I still have one that's in the truck all the time, but, uh, that's the part. I mean, you got to be different. I mean, it's just like my fishing style. You got to be different. I mean, uh, that's when I talk to the pros and I talk to the, to the anglers that fish MLF and bass, that's the thing that they tell me is you just got to be different. You really got to be that guy that just kind of does his thing and it's got to be a little different. I mean, you look at, just for example, look at Jacob Wheeler. I mean, how many guys come from y'all's country and make it as a professional angler? And Jacob not only did that, but I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and say he's replacing KVD uh, at the top of that board right now for probably for for a while. Jimmy, uh, to kind of wrap us up a little bit here, uh, you're on the water. You got some things you want to be doing you know i'm gonna pay you a compliment man it's been a long time since i've seen you but at the end of the day man you're you're confident in what you say you're confident in your own skin you're you're you've built up in the industry you're respecting industry man so i want to tip my cap there tell us a little bit about how we could find you how we could network with you if we're in your neck of the woods um what's the best way to go about uh getting some local tips and things and then we'll kind of wrap it up from there so I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's just Jimmy Barnes. I'm on uh, Instagram. It's uh, Barnes Fishing. Uh, you can pretty much find me there. You can message me on Facebook. I'll always respond. Uh, you can also find me right now. I'm at Get Outdoors. Uh, I'm the shop manager of the tackle side of it. We also have bass boats. Uh, we sell Skeeter, Phoenix. We've got bass cats. We've got a large selection of used boats, so you can find me at either place and get outdoors is in uh, Bryan, Arkansas. We're fixing to be moving a little closer to Benton. So that's uh, that's where I am right now, and, you know, it's it's always fun if you need tackle or you're looking for something, message me on Facebook. If I can't find it, usually we can find somebody that's got it. Uh, now, there is those baits like the Sakamara Shads, the Drift Fries. We just can't find. I mean, we went through our whole deal back in before the Classic when the uh, Bass Pro Anglers were in Texas. And the guys were calling me going, hey, can you get this bait from me? And it even come down to the point that one of the missile baits sales guys calls me and goes, Hey, can you find this for John? He's needing these. And I'm like, man, there's not even any in the States. I mean, so that's, that's pretty impressive. You know, when you get reached out to from the reps and, uh, that's the part, you know, that means something when the reps are telling you they're looking for tackle and they're asking you for it. That's the big, the big thing for me. You're one of the good guys in the industry, man. I tip my cap to you. Let's continue to stay buddies. Let's continue to cross paths. I hope to see you soon and uh, get back out on the water, man, and drill a couple nice fish. All righty. We'll pop some fish here in a while. I appreciate it, man. Good seeing you as always, man. All right. Thank you, Jason. All right. Take care. All right. Y'all guys too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.